Hey, what's up, people? This is Alex here with Alex Pro Mix. Just got my plaque from Dolby Atmos. That's right. Officially certified Dolby Atmos Music Studio. In this next video, I'm going to show you how to use my mixing template to import stems from a signed artist called Judith. The song is called XOXO, which is going live on November 11th when this video goes live. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Good Boy Records. I hope you guys enjoy this video and stay to the very end. Peace. Hey, what's up? This is Alex from Alex Pro Mix. This is part two or the second video of a multi-series video that's going to show you how to mix music in Dolby Atmos. If you haven't already, be sure to watch the first video that's going to show you how I created a mix template from scratch, what plugin settings I used, how I did the routing. That's going to make much more sense when you dive into this mixing video. I'll leave a link on the video description to check that out. All right, so let's pick up where we left off from. So this is our mix template. This is our Pro Tools session mix template. And the next step is going to be to save this into the Pro Tools templates folder. Okay, so for that, I'm gonna to go to File, choose Save as Template. Now I've created a folder called Demo, and I'm gonna put this Atmos mix template. I'm not gonna select a different destination. I'm gonna save it to the uh, system folder, and I'm not gonna include media. I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna go ahead and quit. All right, so now we're going to create a new session. We're going to go to File, New. We're going to go to that folder, which is called Demo, Atmos Mix Template. Make sure the bit rate is set to 32-bit, sample rate 48 hertz, and last used I.O. settings. Now, this is where I like to use this naming mechanism, which is going to be Artist-Song. Judith, we're going to put the artist name, XOXO. And then I'm going to put Atmos Mix. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create this and put this on the desktop. Click Save. And now we have our template. Our mix template is right there, okay? We have no stems. So this is the mix template that I use when I start creating Atmos Mixes. When a client sends me the stems, this is what I use. So now I'm going to import those stems. I'm going to go to Audio Import. I'm going to find the files, which are basically all these. And I think there's a few here that are not part of that, but we'll sort through that in a minute. Everything looks good. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and copy and open. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to match the stereo master. We're going to take these stems and we're going to match the tonality of the stereo master. Super important. All right, so here are the stems. I'm going to go to File, Clip, Name. It's going to show the final mix. That's the final mix. And let's go ahead and click X and put it down here on the final mix reference track, which is actually up here. And we'll move this down here. There we go. Now, because this file has been mastered, it's super loud. And remember, I'm monitoring on my Atmos rig, I'm monitoring at 82 SPL, which means I don't change the volume. I just set it and leave it, and I mix. And the room informs me whether I have too much bass, whether it's too bright, because the room is EQ'd and calibrated, um, mixing based on reaction, based on what I'm feeling. And then I check that on headphones. So the stereo master is way too loud. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this down by about 10 dB. Now, also, you guys can't see on camera, I have a set of VU meters that are calibrated at minus 18. So when I hit play, if those VU meters are averaging around zero, I know that I'm at the right target loudness. Because remember, Dolby Atmos mixes have to meet the um, loudness specification of minus 18 LKFS, which is equivalent on my VU meters to zero. All right, let's check out the song. Here we go. This is Judith. The song name is called XOXO.
so that's just a sneak peek of the song. We're going to mix this song. It's going to be so much fun. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to figure out what the session tempo is because uh, when I'm mixing an Atmos, I want to be able to automate sections at a time. For example, if there's like a guitar loop or an ad lib and I want to move that from front speakers to the rear speakers, I want to make sure that it timelines with a with the session tempo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the transient of the kick, which is going to be somewhere over here. There it is. Chop that out, bring this to the top. And I'm going to use session tempo, tap tempo here in Pro Tools to figure out what the session tempo is. Got a headache from missing you too much. Lately I've been wearing all of your favorite. Let's bring in our click track. Got a headache from missing you too much. Too slow, let's bring it up to 138. All right, so that's the right session tempo. And now let's go ahead and move this to, here's go on grid mode, bring it up, and then scoot this out. And I think that should be time aligned to the stems. It looks like it. That's the kick, yep. So session tempo. So now I have the stereo master and the stems lined up. Now, this is the first mistake you are possibly going to make whenever you're mixing music in Atmos, which is you're going to ignore the length of the stereo mix. Now, it's really, really bad because what happens is that if you submit the stereo mix and the streaming service, the label starts to, tries to publish it, it's going to get rejected. So I'm going to show you how to avoid that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these clips. And remember, the reason I'm doing this is because I cut off a little bit of the, the starting point so I can line it up with the session tempo. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to move it over one bar so everything's lined up. All the stems and the stereo master are lined up. I'm going to take it off of this and now I'm going to bring out that, and that, that start point, which is that much. So if I would have submitted that Atmos mix with the length like this, but the stereo master is like that, it would have been rejected. So that's going to save you guys that headache. All right, cool. Now with all these stems selected, I am going to lock them, which is keyboard shortcut, control option L. And that's going to lock the time so that they don't get moved around. And let's go ahead and start cleaning them up. So let's bring everything. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, strip silence. Actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and bring them into our stems, the stems that we created on our previous video. So let's get rid of any tracks that are just uh, clutter like these. These don't belong here. So all the stems line up. Cool. All right. So how many stems do we have? We have 36 stems. These are 36 stereo stems. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to cut them. And I'm going to enable stem 1 through stem 36 from my template. Remember, these have the plugins already initiated and set up with groups and things like that and everything's already routed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these stems and copy them there, and that's what we're gonna listen through and that's what we're gonna use for mixing, all right? So these original tracks I don't need, I'm gonna select them all, delete. All right, cool. Let's verify everything works. Uh, mute the stereo master and let's hear the stereo stems. And what I'll do is I'll use this limiter as a volume knob to adjust the whole mix up and down. Cool. So actually the stereo master and the stems sound almost identical. So I don't have to do a lot of processing, which is great because that this task right here can take a good 30, 45 minutes matching the stereo master to the stems. And I've been in situations where I've submitted Atmos mixes and the mix engineer writes like a paragraph of notes saying, hey man, <laughs> you know, listen to the master because the tone is not right. And then it's my job as an engineer to match the tone. So that's why it's called engineering. All right, a couple of other things I want to do here is I want to enable heat. This is uh, 
specific to Pro Tools, but I'm gonna bypass it on the Stereo Master because I don't want heat affecting Stereo Master. For you guys who don't know, heat is, an, is a way of adjusting or, or enabling analog warmth and tone to all the audio tracks um, and they run in parallel. So it's kind of a way of using uh, of using saturation for glue purposes or to make the mix more, co more cohesive, all right? Cool. All right, cool. So we got that, we got this. Next up, let's go ahead and clean up our stems. So I'm gonna use strip silence and just basically get rid of anything that's silence. And I'm gonna increase the clip length all the way because what happens is sometimes this will chop off reverbs and you don't want that happening on the stems. Remember, these stems have been pre-processed with effects, reverbs, and delays, and you don't want to chop that off accidentally. All right, there we go. That's going to just be a cleaner look. This is going to tell me when something comes in, and it just allows me to solo those clips whenever I want to isolate or hear something. Cool. All right, there we go. And we'll leave this one alone. Perfect. All right, so let's get to mixing. All right, so I'm gonna check out the song, but really what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of just start investigating to see what these tracks are. For this, I'm gonna use solo mode um, XOR, which cancels the previous solo. And let's just dig in. Let's see what's in here. At this point, I'm going to kind of ignore you guys for a minute. I'm just gonna go into my own zone of mixing, do what I do best. And also, so you guys can actually hear this on headphones, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take all these uh, objects and put them on mid so you guys can actually hear any changes that I'm making. The only ones I won't put on mid is going to be the front and also 21, which I believe is a center channel. And then later we'll tweak this. But for now, I'm just gonna do what I do and uh, you guys just watch and then I'll come back and show you exactly what I did. Here we go from the top. All right, cool. So let's, uh, I just spread the mix a little bit, not a whole lot, uh, into the render, into the room. So I assigned some of the channels to the rear. I assigned some channels to the highs. I assigned some of the channels to the high rears, some to the sides. Not a whole lot. Another, like the DX7, I brought that into the room. I'll get into that later. 
But what I want to do first is I want to start creating some ear candy for the listener. Got a headache from missing you too. All right, so this sound right here. What I want to do is I want to spin this around the listener's head, all right? So for that, I'm going to use a plugin called Energy Panner. Big ups to Tony, Tony Joy. And Energy Panner allows me to use sliding, which will give me the ability to basically pan this around the room in a 3D environment. Very important that it's set to 702 and that this is set to 702 to avoid the LFE. Let's check this out. Cool, so that's spinning around my head. Now for you guys on YouTube listening to this on headphones, this is where the binaural settings come in. If I set this too far, it's gonna sound like it's further away. It's gonna enhance, it's gonna use more room simulation. Now for me, mixing in my room, I don't hear any changes when I switch the binaural settings. That's only for the headphone experience. So in my room, it's spinning around my room, my head, like it's actually spinning around my head, going through all my speakers. But for you guys, using the binaural settings gives you that simulation as if you're in the room. All right, cool. So we got that there. Let's check out these guitars. Cool. All right, so I have an idea. So I'm going to take these guitars and I'm going to send them to an aux. I'm going to use this aux, I'm going to call it aux, I'm going to call it rear delay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep these guitars in front of me and I'm going to feed them to a delay that's going to be delayed and like swell behind me. So I'm going to create this cascading sound as a listener. I'm here, I'm hearing the guitars, but they're going to swell behind me. So let's go ahead and uh, crank this up all the way. We can use any plugins that we want. Let's go for H delay because it's got a... Um, a time setting and this is why I match the session tempo to the song at the beginning of the session super important so that all my plugins are properly synced and time aligned all right this is going to be panned to the rear there it is and let's see how much we adjust let's set this to pre so you guys can only hear the rear Okay, so right now I've isolated the rear delay. So I'm only hearing this delay coming from behind me, okay? Now let me go ahead and turn on the guitars in front of me and hear the two. Now typically what I do in the uh, object bed, because I have the, I'm using objects here, so I'm using rear channels, which is objects 15 and 16. I'm going to go here to the renderer and go to 15 and 16 and change this from mid to far so that on the headphones, this feels further away. Cool. Let's hear that with this uh, arpeggiated sound. Okay. So let's go ahead and switch this from solo mode to latch and we'll check those two together. Here we go. Very nice. It's like you get this arpeggiated sound swirling around your head and then the guitars come in, but you hear its echo behind you. So it's things like that that you can't do in stereo, guys. This is just amazing, amazing technology. Here we go. Okay, so I want to create a scene. So a lot of times when I'm mixing an Atmos and I'm listening to the song arrangement, I'm thinking of scenes, okay? Scene one, intro. Scene two, verse. Scene three, pre-chorus. Scene four, chorus. So on this scene for the verse, I'm, I'm, I have this swirl around me. I have these cascading guitars and I want to put Judith's voice, not in the stereo, but I want to put it in the center channel, like right in front of me. I want to anchor her voice directly in front of me 
while all these other things are taking place so that she doesn't get lost in the mix. So for that, I'm gonna find that track, which is called Vocal Lead. I'm gonna duplicate it, because later on I'll keep it in stereo. And let's go ahead and mute that. And we'll set this output to center. And when I play this back, her voice is only gonna come out of my center speaker. Got a headache from missing you too much. Lately I've been wearing all of your favorites so make myself feel better. Now what happens when you do that? When, what happens when you take a voice and you put it to the center speaker, you start hearing like all these little mouth noises, right? That get blurred and lost in stereo. So I have to compensate for that and I have to sort of clean that up. My two favorite plugins for dealing with that are SA2 by MCDSP and AIR by Sound Particles. A combination of these two allows me to sort of DS or control the, uh, the detail of her voice without losing the clarity. Cool, so scene one is done, scene two, she goes into the stereo, and then the song continues. So let me do some of the things here on the intro with the uh, ad-libs. All right, there's already some panning and echoes here, but I wanna go ahead and spin it around the listener. So we'll go to Energy Panner, choose 702, and set the output to bed 702. And let's do sliding, but let's just kinda go a little bit more chaotic here. I love that sound. Now this is where you start getting into the plugin parameters where ratio increases the speed, threshold is when this kicks in, and then attack and release is like how fast it actually starts. So I'm gonna slow down the attack and release so it doesn't start in right away. What I've learned with Atmos and Spatial Audio and Immersive Audio is that if you do too fast of movements, the brain doesn't catch it. But if you're subtle and go slow, then it becomes more noticeable. Got a headache from missing you too much. Lately, I've been wearing all of your favorites, so make myself feel better. Hope I smell like you. Okay, so this sound right here, now we're going into another scene. And instead of just keeping this in stereo or even moving into the sides, I want there to be a dynamic movement of the sound around me. So for that, again, I'm gonna use the energy panner and I'm gonna use 702. I'm going to change the output to 702 and I'm gonna switch this movement like this. And what this is gonna do is that this is going to start there at this start point, but then it's gonna move it out of the starting point into the room. This is a really, really cool effect. In fact, I have a preset for it, which is right here. Mm -hmm. 
So now instead of just coming at me from a distance, it's like swirling around me, you know, slowly. All right, so let me explain something, uh, a different kind of concept of mixing in Atmos, which uh, doesn't really exist in stereo. This is called on the wall and in the room. <laughs> All right, so here we have uh, basically a cube, right? And if everything that I have panned right down my object bed is panned on the wall, because there's a physical speaker on, on this wall that represents like my room. So when, whenever you pan something and you put it on the perimeter of this room, that's called, you know, you panning it on the wall or the perimeter. But there's another thing called like panning it or bringing it into the room. And that's what I'm going to show you next. So this, this keyboard sound right here, that's a really basic sound as far as like what it does. This is what it sounds like in stereo. That's on the wall that's coming out of those two, two speakers. It's coming from a direction. But when you change this from, you know, sending it to the uh, object bed and you actually choose an object like here, then you have the flexibility of panning it anywhere in the room. And so this is basically bringing that sound into the room. So I'm going to bring it near to the listener and a couple of things are going to happen. Watch. No longer is it coming to me from a distance, but it's actually closer to me. And because this dot is here, or this object is here, it's now being reproduced by these speakers, by this left speaker and by the side speaker. Both of these speakers are projecting that sound to appear somewhere over here. Now, if I increase the height, so let me go ahead and show you guys what that would look like. So by increasing the height, now I am causing these speakers above me to project that sound. So now I have like six set of speakers projecting that stereo sound closer to the listener. And that's basically mixing the sound into the room. And that's going to be reflected here as well. So what's happening because this is now an object is being uh, reproduced by all these speakers to project it in that particular location. And that's called object mixing. So you're mixing a sound into the room and now it's kind of being projected in that particular place. All right, so I did that with the keyboard. Let's see what other goodies we have around here. That's cool in the rear. Let's see what these are. Cool. All right. So this is where I start building the cone or what I call the ceiling. So this sound is just pings. It's coming from stereo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a send and create a ceiling above me. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll create a new track, uh, auxiliary stereo. I'm going to call it, um, ceiling plate. Perfect. Ceiling plate ceiling plate is there and I'm going to pan this or assign this to high front which are my high front speakers and high rear which are my high rear speakers okay so now this sound is going to go to this this auxiliary track and this auxiliary track is pre-panned to my ceiling speakers so you guys are going to see that reflected here there it is now on that track I'm going to put a reverb let's go ahead and use a plate I like the little plate so I'm sending this sound to a plate and that plate is coming or that plate reverb sound is coming from above me. Oh man, that sounds so cool. Wow, that's amazing. Let's see what else there is. Cool, let's send that to the ceiling as well. 
that is just so 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 cool uh we got some other delays most of this is drums and vocals and then with a a few instruments okay so that's set to the sides and i think this is set to the rear so together sound like this yep and all this is ear candy all right so let's go ahead and play this from verse two Let's check it out. I'm here, so I forgot to say the things I want to say. And my message didn't go through, but I know you're on the plane. And I know that when you land, that you'll hit me back right away with those two little letters, lowercase. Got me feeling like, oh, oh, oh. Every time that you write, I so so. All right, so th something I'm missing is those backing vocals. Got me feeling like, whoa. Let's find them. Yeah, like that. So basically, I have the lead, which is coming from in front of me. Got me feeling like, whoa. But I want to bring those backing vocals like around me, like more and more close, all right? So let's go ahead and change that to an object and pan it closer to the listener. Here we go. Got me feeling like whoa, oh, oh. Every time that you write XO, XO, oh, oh. Now it's like closer. It's almost like a whisper near me. All right. So let's check that out in the mix. Now that when you learn that you'll hit me back right away with those two little letters, lowercase. Got me feeling like whoa. Alright guys, so that's all the time that we have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the song. Be sure to check it out on your favorite streaming service. Be sure to check out the Dolby Atmos mix on Spatial Audio, Tidal, Amazon, or Apple Music. Artist name is Judith. Song name is XOXO. Thanks Tim of Vinculum Records. And also, the next video that I'm going to publish is going to be on what to do with the song after it's been mixed and mastered. What do you do? How do you deliver it? How do you send files to the label to preview and audition it? And how to publish the mix. So thanks again, guys, so much for watching. My name is Alex here with Alex Pro Mix. If this is your first time watching, my name is Alex. I'm a certified Atmos engineer for Universal and Warner. And I provide various mixes, Atmos mixes for labels and indie artists. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up at alexpromix.com. Till next time, peace.